Uh, I was going to find time to get something together, to be honest with you, because I've been working a lot of hours this week. It um, seemed like every time I'd get home, I'd get called right back out to work. And uh, it's just been a real busy week, and we ended up having to work yesterday until about uh, about 1.30 or 2 yesterday. And <clears throat> when I got home, I told Brittany, I said, I said, I've got to, I've got to get some time and I've got to start reading and, and get to studying on this Bible. That way I can get something together for today. Yes, sir. And, uh, of course, it's getting close to supper time. And, and uh, I told her, I said, well, I said, I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I, I went to the grocery store and I bought a whole bunch of stuff. And I told her, I said, I'm going to. I'm going to sit outside, and I'm going to fire up the barbecue grill, and I'm going to get my Bible out, and I'm going to study while I'm cooking. <laughs> All right. So I said, uh, I said, I get to do, get to do a couple of my favorite things. Everybody knows me knows I love the grill. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so I got to sit out and enjoy the hot weather in, in the shade and, and a little bit of breeze and uh, cooking and then studying the Bible, too. Praise God. <clears throat> And so um, I got to thinking back on uh, when we would do the Bible studies during the week. And uh, I always kept the Bible studies real, real short. And of course, I don't do a lot of talking anyways too much, I don't guess. But um, I got to thinking back on how um, one of the Bible studies I did was in the book of James. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go back to it and uh, kind of elaborate on it a little bit farther than what we did in the Bible study. And, uh, you know, I got to thinking about um, testimonies and things like that. Um, people, when they get up and they testify, you know, and they, they tell the things that God's done for them, usually it don't take very long. I mean, if you really get into it, it can take a long time for all the things that God's done for, them, right. for you. But usually when somebody gives a testimony, it's just something real short and small. And, uh, you know, to try to have an impact on somebody's life. And I got to thinking, you know, the biggest testimony that people have is the lives that they live. Sure, yes. You know, the, the importance of the way that you live your life is the biggest testimony that anybody will ever see or get from you is the life that you live. Um, walk the walk. You, you can see somebody out on the street, somebody you've known for the past five years, and you can give them a five minute testimony. Well, you can't say a whole lot in five minutes, but they've known you for five years, so the life that you live will have more of an impact on them than that five minutes of speaking that you can do with them. Sure, it's contagious. And so um, I'm gonna go to the book of James, first chapter. I'm gonna go to verse 22 through 25. Amen. James, brother Jesus. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word oh, and, not. and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and giveth his way and straightway forgetteth that manner of man he was. Okay, so... Um, you know, you come to church and you listen to the word and not only do you listen to the word, but you're supposed to do what the word says. Sure. And there's a lot of people that, that they think that just coming to church on Sundays is enough to get them by and they don't have to change the way they look. They think that they can come to church and listen to the word and then they go back out on the street and do everything Jesus that they were doing rabbit. before. You, you have to change. You have to hear the word and you have to do what it says. You have to turn your life around. There will be results. <clears throat> and in uh, verse 23, it talks about him holding his natural face in a glass. You know, when you come to church and you get involved in church and then, you know, you just leave it here. A lot of people, that they'll come to church and they just they walk right out of the, they leave their Christianity right here. Yeah. They don't take it with them out from this building. Mm -hmm. And then right. when they come back in, they just pick it right back oh, up. Oh, yeah. And they pick right back up where they left off. But when they turn around and they go back out the building, 
they just it's like there's a lock box sitting right there by the door and they just they take their christianity in there at the door and then when they come back in they grab it and put it back in their pocket and come into the church and you can't be like that you have to take it with you out there because what you hear here is not just for you it's for everybody else don't keep no secrets it's for the people that you come in contact with on a daily basis that are not in this service um so um i'm going to we're going to go to mark chapter 10. We're going to go to verse 17. And we're going to uh, we're going to read about 10 verses right here. Unless I, I guess unless I stop before the end. But, um, this is the, an example of a hearer. This is an example of somebody who thought that they were living the right life. But when they were asked to do something, they refused to give it up. Yeah. It happened here. Yes. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto them, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto them, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Bless him. Then Jesus, beholding him, him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Give of yourself. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved. Couldn't do a hundred. For he had great possessions. Okay, um, I'm going to stop right there. Um, what he had so far in his life, he told Jesus that he had lived a good life, basically. But in this example, Jesus told him, you know, to sell all your things and give it to the poor. So he was asked one more thing, and he didn't want to do it. Open up our heart, Lord. And so many people don't want to do that one extra thing that we're yeah, asked. Right. There's so many people that, that, you know, as far as everybody knows, that live a good life. But they don't want to take that last step <clears throat> to be saved, and it's um, and it, it's not that much more difficult, really. You know, it, you got the hard part down. You know, you've already lived a good life. You know, you're, you're not. You know, this guy he he'd given up all the the bad things of the world already. And he was just asked for one more thing. You know, he had possessions. And but in this instant he put his possessions before God. Oh. And that's why he was asked to get rid of them. And he refused not. So or he refused to. He didn't pass the test. He didn't pass the test. He um <coughs> he heard what he was supposed to do, but he didn't do it. He didn't. And, uh, you know, there's many instances in the Bible where you have people that are doers. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, everybody knows the story of Jonah. Well, Jonah, you know, he was asked to go to Nineveh, and he ran from it. He so, almost failed. All right, well, this, I, I think this is a very, very good example in the Bible because it shows 
how so many people end up coming to Christ today. Because when Jonah ran, he ended up being swallowed by the big fish. He had time to think. That yeah. is a very, very good example yeah. of somebody hitting rock bottom. Yeah. When he was in the belly of that big fish, he must have thought to himself, you know, this has got to be, this is rock this, bottom. This it it can't get any worse than this. <laughs> You know, and it's some people they have to hit rock bottom before they come back up. That's okay. And to me, that that's Not a very good up. story. You know, but and uh, you know, Jonah, he heard what he was told to do, but he didn't do it. So sometimes God pushes us and lets us hit rock bottom. And some people, when they hit rock Keep bottom, they're good. they're sitting there thinking, you know. How could God let me get to this point? Mm -hmm. You know, God didn't let you get to that no, point. You, you put that, yourself you got in that there point. on your own. <laughs> God is giving you this opportunity to change your life. The word when you hit rock bottom, that's not a, and that's not that God has left you. It's that God is giving you your last chance. You know, no, God is giving you another chance to climb back up. Oh, bless God! And so, um, but then you have other people in the Bible. Um, like David, you know, David, he was a, uh, you know, he pretty well, he, he did what he was supposed to do, you know, what whenever he uh, slayed the giant, he didn't hesitate, no, he didn't, you know, he, he, I'll do it, and you know, that's the kind of Christian that I want to be, I want to be the one that says, I'll do it, yeah, you know, and it's, uh, <laughs> Said, Send me, Lord. It's a that's the the kind of people that I want to strive to be like. Amen. Association's important. And so we're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter seven. Oh. Bless those <laughs> We're going to go to verse. 24. And this is something that was spoken right out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not what for wisdom? it was founded upon the rock wisdom and and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house what and it fell and the and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Okay, and it says right here, the person that heareth and doeth them. Yep. It requires do both. You can't just come to church and listen. You have to act upon what you hear <coughs> in church. You have to act upon what you possible. study in the Bible. You it's have to act upon away. these things it's when you're out in the world. Because your testimony is what could bring somebody else to church. Help we all, Lord. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to go to verse 28. But what think ye, a certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. 
But afterwards he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered the son. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They said unto him, The first Jesus the first Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterwards that ye might believe him. Okay, so the, the first son said, no, he didn't want to go do this, but out of respect for the father, he went and did it anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the second son told him that he would go do it, and then he didn't. So, and, and that's the way so many people are. They, they come to church and they say, God, I'm going to change my life. And then they go right back out and do the same yep, things that they did before. Change. You know, they come in here and they come to the altar and they say, God, I'm giving it all to you. I'm going to change. But come, and they may change for Monday and they may change for Tuesday. And then they get to being influenced by the world again. And then they slowly go back into doing the things that they've done before. <clears throat> and it's very important that when you come here and you hear the word of God, that you take it with you. I mean, I can't really stress that enough because there's so many people that come to church and they sit here and they listen to the word and they hear everything that the person says, but they leave it here. They don't take it with them. They don't apply it to their daily lives. They don't continue to grow as a Christian. And I mean, I, I, I guess in a way you're not really a Christian if you don't take it out into the world with you because you haven't really changed. You just become a, a Sunday show. And there's so many people that are just a Sunday show. Weekend warrior. <laughs> That's a really good That's pretty one. Good. <laughs> Weekend warrior. Yeah. There's so many people that come here and and they don't take anything with them when they leave. And uh, you know it. Yes, sir, Tom. And uh, you know, there's there's even people that they go out and uh, to even other people and, and they they say that um, you know I'm a Christian but do they really know what that means do they really know what being a Christian means a follower of Christ do they um, in his word his teaching, there's so many people that, that go out and they try to give advice unto you other people on how to live their lives but they don't have their own life straightened out their self yes, we all live. it's easy to go from here and to go out and say you know what that's wrong they shouldn't be doing that but amongst yourself you're doing the same thing just in a different form you know uh, you go out and you tell somebody that it's wrong to do this but in the confines of your own home you're doing something else that's wrong that's a hypocrite it's, there's so many people that you can't go out and show people wrong when you're in the wrong yourself. If we change, Lord. You have to change. You have to be the one to live the life. When you begin to live the life that you should live. Change is good if it's good. Exactly. Amen. Change is very good. Um and uh, I'm getting pretty close to being done uh, I found this little reading uh, yesterday when I was looking up things on my phone and I, I came across lots and lots of stories <laughs> and of course you know I sat out there and I read for about two hours and it was just stories of people's uh, the things that people had 
gone through himself. You know, somebody's testimony that they had written down. Right. And I came across this little uh, saying right here. It says a temptation in ministry is to think that just because we prepared a Bible study, a sermon, or a discipleship appointment, we are deeply engaged with the God of the universe. But that's not necessarily true. It's easy to minister to live more as a pipe than a reservoir. That is, it's easy to live merely as a conduit to others of the transforming truth of God's word rather than to be changed and transformed reservoir to overflow with lived out gospel truth. You wouldn't imagine cooking a meal after meal for your family without sitting down to enjoy the nourishment, would you? Yes, to paraphrase James 1 and 21, let's not merely be hearers or speakers or counselors in the word, but doers first and foremost. Take some action. And and I really like that, um, that little uh, paraphrase of it. Uh, because it kind of hits it right on the head you know it's a uh, it's so important to make sure that that you study the Bible and not only study Lord. the Bible but to change your life according to the Bible Amen. this book this word is an example unto us unto the life way the life we're supposed to live it's precious it's very important that we mold our lives after the people in this Bible because this is all examples of how we should never be. let it get away from you. Amen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>